Hi, it's Heather from Thick It Works, and today I want to share my method for casting latex lace. I get great results using Alex Fast Dry Acrylic Latex Caulk and Cornstarch as a mold release. If you want high fidelity castings from these shallow fondant style molds, this is the way to go. The resulting lace is flexible, sturdy, and can be used in so many different ways. Apply a dusting of cornstarch to the mold before spreading the caulk across the surface. My favorite tool for this application is a Bondo spreader. It has a nice wide blade, but it's soft and resilient, so it won't gouge the surface of the mold, but it does an excellent job of smoothing the caulk into all of the nooks and crannies. It's important to use the blade from several different directions as you fill the mold. You'll see here that I'm smooshing that caulk into this very, very fine netting using this blade, but you need to come at it from several different directions. So change direction with your blade often and come at it from both sides and the top and bottom in order to fill all of the holes. Use the same exact technique if you're working with one of these slightly more robust lace molds that have deeper cavities and wider curly cues. It's a good idea to work on either a non-stick craft sheet like I'm using here or a disposable work surface so that any of the caulk that might be smeared on that work surface won't ruin your day. While the caulk is still moist, it's easy to clean up with a damp sponge, so keep one handy. I like to make sure that I fill all of my shallow fondant style molds so that I get a nice decent harvest of lace at the end of the process. Once the molds have been filled, you can wipe the surface with a damp sponge and then use the blade again to remove as much of the remaining film on the top as you possibly can before it cures. Once you've filled your molds and you've removed as much of that upper film as you can, allow them to cure overnight for the very best results. Once the castings have cured, the first job is to remove every bit of the remaining film on the upper surface of the molds. You can do this in several ways. By using a baby wipe, as you see me doing here, and you simply scrub the surface until all of that latex just peels away and you have a nice clean result. This is a slightly tedious process, but it's very important to do it. Otherwise, when you demold, that film will remain connected to all the various filaments of your castings. Once the latex film has been removed, dust the upper surface of the castings with cornstarch and then place them face down on your work surface. It's easiest to demold by rolling back the flexible mold material and teasing out the castings with your fingertips. This process can be a bit persnickety at the very beginning, but once you manage to release that leading edge, it becomes easier and easier to just roll away the mold while leaving the flexible casting deposited on the work surface. It's incredibly satisfying. That light dusting of cornstarch on the upper surface of the castings is important. Without it, it's likely that the castings will stick to themselves wherever they touch, and that is not a fun occurrence, I promise. Now this long strip mold that you see me working with here demonstrates how easy it is to roll away the flexible mold while depositing the casting onto the work surface. The first time you successfully demold one of these lace castings, you are going to fall in love with this process. I have one word of caution about using caulk in molds. The molds cannot be very deep. The caulk will not cure properly and you will be left with a goopy mess if you try to fill a standard mold with this caulk. Use it only in a shallow mold. Don't ask how I know. Okay, so let's demold this beautiful motif. 
I can't wait to see this one. After dealing with the fiddly bits at the very beginning of the demolding process, it gets easier and easier to roll that mold away from the casting pretty quickly. And just look at that lattice work at the top and that gorgeous filigree dangling down below. I mean, this is amazing. This next casting is one of my all time favorites. Just look at that netting. Now you don't have to use a baby wipe to remove that film. A pencil eraser will do it as well, but that's a lot of area to cover with one small eraser. So I really prefer using a silicone tipped spatula like this one from the dollar store. It covers a lot more real estate a lot more quickly. Oh my goodness. Are you seeing this? How freaking cool is that? This process makes me want to invest in every fondant mold out there. I mean, holy cow. That is a huge return on investment right there. The stark white of the castings is gorgeous and oh so bridal, but if like me, you crave darker colors, don't worry. You can absolutely spray paint this stuff. And once the paint is dry, you can roll up your completed castings in parchment paper right on the roll. This is a great way to store these castings until you're ready to incorporate them into your next project. How are you going to use your latex lace? I like to incorporate mine into mixed media projects. It's super easy to glue these pieces of latex lace onto just about any substrate using Aileen's Tacky Glue or if you prefer something stronger, E6000. I've just begun my journey of working with latex lace and I can't wait to incorporate it into more and more projects. I hope this demonstration has been helpful to you. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Until next time, bye.